What the heck is up you guys, it's your boy Ace aka Animated Heroes here back with another action figure review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Figma Jujutsu Kaisen Greatness Megami Fushiguro from the Jujutsu Kaisen anime. Now this is one I have been waiting on for quite a while. You guys know I love this anime so let's go ahead and dive right into it starting off with the sexy packaging. Now the box is pretty reminiscent to the old Figma packages that we used to get that were a tad bit wider. Um, they have since then slimmed down, but for this one it makes sense uh, because you can see everything that's inside the package. The window and everything shows quite a few of the accessories, more than what we normally see. Um, I do love the blue that they went with for the theme. I do think they should have used a darker blue. I think it would have been better, but I mean, this like teal-ish color does look good. You've got Megami right here on the side. You've got Megami right here. Does say 564 at the bottom, Megami Fushiguro. Um, at the top, it does say Good Smile Company, Figma 564, Jujutsu Kaisen logo in the top right. You got the Divine Dog right there next to him. Uh, right here, we have an image of him using his Chimera Shadow Garden, looking really dope. Um, on this side right here, we have him where he's about to summon the bird. I can't remember the name of it. Someone can comment it. And then on the back, we have several poses we can get the figure into, as well as all the legal stuff on the back. Now, there is one thing that I noticed about this immediately. Nowhere on the packaging does it say Max Factory. And that's been happening with a lot of the figures from Figma I've been getting lately. I don't know what's up with that, but um, I don't know if they branched out or what. But that scares me because we remember what happened the last time I reviewed something that wasn't manufactured by Max Factory. But anyway, let's go ahead and bust this guy open. Uh, I do have high expectations for this. A lot of the Figma stuff has been good lately uh, regarding this line in particular. Now straight out of the packaging, it's very safe to say that if you've got Yuji and you've got Gojo from the Figma line, then you pretty much already know what to expect with this guy. It literally looks and feels almost identical. And that's not a bad thing. These guys are for the most part wearing the same type of outfit. Uh, it's just like long black sleeves, long black pants that cut off right before the ankles and then some kind of shoes and a head sculpt. That's pretty much what it is with every single one of these figures. Some of them have a few things different like Yuji's collar um, and then Gojo's collar does sit a tad bit higher. But again, for the most part, all the same and it's starting to feel like it's very repetitive with the Figma line. And I know that's weird, but it didn't feel like that with the SHF line, mostly because it, it was just something that they did different. I don't know what it is, but uh, again, Figma has gone with that very slim look. And the more of these I get, the more I'm kind of like, oh man, I really like the, the bulky SHF stuff. Like, it's not that it looks bad, but when you have these two side by side, I just prefer that thicker look. I, I think that maybe it's because I got used to this. Maybe I'm spoiled by SHF. I cannot say, but I really like the bigger outfit look personally. But if you want to see more comparisons between these two, um, maybe I'll drop that comparison video. I still got to do the Gojo one. I've been slacking. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the Figma Megumi. Now, getting up close and personal, I will say that the hair sculpt on this guy is really dang good. And I remember when they first started making Jujutsu Kaisen figures, when we got Yuji and we got Gojo. I was afraid of any company making Megami because I just thought that they would just botch the hair. But both companies have absolutely killed it. So I'm happy about that. Uh, the body, like I said, very, very slim, very sleek. Um, it does feel a bit softer than the SHF. Um, and whether you like that or not is entirely up to you. They have the button sculpted on the butterfly joint, which doesn't look too bad. Um, but the more I look at these shoulders, the more I'm kind of like, man, I don't really like that opening at the top right there. I wish they could find a way around that. Uh, but at this point, we've got it with three figures, so I don't see it changing. The legs, not a whole lot of sculpt work. You've got a few sculpted wrinkles. Um, the pants are a little bit tighter around the calves. And then the shoes are just the typical brown shoes that he wears. Now, it's not a whole lot to talk about with this guy. Uh, but I do want to show the SHF one more time. Not for the uh, hair 
or anything, not even the clothing really, but mostly just the face. Um, now, I'm not going to lie, man. I like the face more on the SHF. Both of them are Mega Me completely, but man, I just prefer the SHF. And again, I'm not, this isn't the comparison video, but I did want to show those side by side. So I won't bring the other Mega Me out again unless we do a size comparison. But yeah, let's go ahead and put this guy back so we can see how tall he stands. So for the height of Fushiguro to the top of his head, as you guys can see, he's right at, to the top of his head, he's right at about five and a half inches to the top of his hair. He's pushing almost six and a half, which it makes sense. He does have the very tall, spiky hair, uh, which is weird but it's definitely its own unique design so uh yeah i think it's fine it is going to fit in scale very well and if you're curious to see how he fits we will be doing size comparisons a little bit later moving on to the articulation of this figure this is actually where we run into our first problem because this figure does not look up at all reason being is because the top of the hair is just something that attaches on to the back piece and the front of the face. Uh, and this is the engineering that you have. So when you try to get this guy to look up, it's just not happening. You can kind of tilt it back using the base of the neck, but that's not going to work very well. So unfortunately, looking up poses are pretty much just not going to happen with this guy, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, the rest of the head moves around fine. You're not going to have any trouble getting any other expression out of him. Arms and shoulders go up very well. I don't like the design, but I love the effectiveness of it, so I can't complain too much. He does have a swivel built in, single jointed elbow with double jointed range. Hands are on the typical Figma hinge. This one feels very, very sturdy, by the way, so I'm happy about that. Butterfly joint is amazing amazing this guy can bring his hands all the way in and that's going to work for whenever you're using those interchangeable hands uh, for when he's summoning his shikigami now the diaphragm joint is also very effective leans back not too much but leans forward very well um not as much as yuji and gojo though uh, but it does work. And of course, the rock is there. He does have a swivel at the waist. And then as far as the legs go, he does the splits just fine. He can kick all the way up. But again, it does have that same problem that Gojo and Yuji have where these legs will pop off if you kick them forward too much just because of how small that inner hinge is in there. And actually, I think it's really just because this leg is loose. The plastic right here feels very like, I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's as sturdy as it should be. It's popping on and off, but um, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, thigh swivel is just like not going to happen. It does, but as soon as you start swiveling that too much, the leg's going to come off. Again, same issue with Yuji and Gojo. Now, the knees, very good range. Very ugly looking though, man. And then this one looks bad. It looks like there's like rust on the knee. I'm not sure if it's picking up on camera, but one, one side of the joint is very shiny and then the other one just looks like it's like an old piece of plastic. Uh, I don't know if that's picking up, but yeah, that's weird. Whatever though. Um, he doesn't have any kind of swivel right here. His foot goes down about that much, up about that much a tad bit of ankle rocker, and then a bit of a toe hinge. So articulation wise, about the same as Yuji and Gojo. Um, he does have a whole lot of range, but then he also does have the same limitations. So when it comes to accessories, I didn't really feel like breaking out the display stand today. So I'm just going to do it like this. I'm going to show the figure and the accessories. Uh, first off, he comes with a neutral head sculpt and a pair of fist hands. We do also have his divine dog next to him, which is weird. This thing has one piece of articulation and it's just the head. But if you turn it like the way it looks makes absolutely no sense. And as you guys just saw, it's on a ball peg. You pretty much just keep it this way. That's literally the only way the articulation on it makes sense. Now, in terms of hands, I'll show you guys all of them on the rack here. Uh, he comes with a pair of gripping hands 
first and foremost, which is great because as we all know, he does use weapons. So this gives you the option. He comes with a pair of relaxed hands and a pair of reaching, grabbing, stylish, fighting pose type hands. Glad that they threw those in. Um, he does come with a pair of hands for when he summons his owl, the one that got decimated by Sukuna. I forget what it's called. I think it's new. Um, don't quote me on that. But these look really good. He comes with a pair of hands for when he summons the Divine Dog. Or Divine Dog. I don't know why I'm having deja vu right now. But um, yeah, that's weird. He does also come with a pair of hands for his Chimera Shadow Garden, which I love. Uh, and then he comes with a yelling, screaming face which uh this has two paint splotches on the face absolutely unacceptable so i probably won't be using that uh and last for face plates he comes with the one that i wanted the most the expression for when he uses the chimera shadow garden the very first time you can see the blood on his face and even the scratch right there i'm so glad they included that this is just, even when I reviewed my SHF, I stated that I wish they threw this expression in. So I'm so glad Figma decided to do so. Lastly, he does come with this piece of plastic that you stick on the ground for when he is summoning any of his Shikigami and they're coming out of the shadows. So um, yeah, uh, nothing extremely impressive, but he comes with a few, so I'm happy. Moving on to size comparisons, here he is standing next to both of the Figma figures that we've gotten so far. We have him standing next to the Figma Yuji Itadori, and we have him standing next to the Figma Satoru Gojo. Um, and to be honest, he's definitely the weakest out of the three. I'll be real with you guys. And honestly, his proportions look off in comparison to Yuji and Gojo. Um, I know they're going with the slimmer look, but if you look at the three of these side by side, it almost looks like he is a tad bit too small. Um, not so much in comparison to Gojo, but definitely in comparison to Yuji. Next up, here he is standing next to the SH Figure Arts versions of his team. We have him standing next to the SH Figure Arts Megami Fushiguro, the SH Figure Arts Yuji Itadori, and the SH Figure Arts Nobara Kugisaki. Um, I think he fits in scale fine enough with Nobara, but definitely not Yuji. Here he is standing next to an SH Figure Arts Yuta Okotsu and two different versions of SH Figure Arts Satoru Gojo. We have the regular version, which is currently unblindfolded or the blindfold is taken off. And then we do have the JJK Zero version where he has the blindfold lifted just a tad. Um, again, I think he fits in fine with Gojo, but not Yuta at all. Lastly, for some extras, here he is standing next to a Mafex Black Suit Spider-Man, a Revel Tech Black Panther, and a Marvel Legends 3-pack Daredevil. Now, I'll be honest, for my final thoughts on this guy, I gotta say, the third time around, it's not really impressive. And what I mean by that is, I really liked the Figma Yuji, mostly because it was a fairly decent Figma release. Bouncing back off that release of Akaza, which was absolutely atrocious, um, I was pretty ecstatic. And then the fact that it was Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, that made me like it even more. But... Now that I've had it for a little bit longer, I have realized some of the problems. Then that brings me to Gojo. Gojo was a solid figure. Gojo is one of my top anime characters of all time. He's probably number two. So there was a whole lot of bias in that review, but at the same time, I did point out some of the problems. Some of those problems leading into this figure here. Now, first off, I don't like the shoulder joints. Um, they get very good range, but based on the way you pose them, they can make these figures look extremely stiff. And certain times, it just looks ugly, man. Something about it just doesn't look right. Um, now, if you know how to pose your figures, that's not necessarily a problem. That's just a tad bit of a nitpick that I have on my end. Uh, my main issue is the joint that connects the legs to the figure, which is in the crotch area. Again, that piece is just way too small. Anytime you try to get these guys in any kind of dynamic poses, the legs are going to pop off. And then the joint that it connects to on this figure is very flimsy. It feels like the plastic wasn't fully molded, so it feels like it's fragile. Honestly, with this guy, um, 
I can see the legs just popping off on this guy more and more uh, as I pose him around, which is why I probably won't. I'll probably leave him in more vanilla-like poses or just standing up. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot with this one right here. Uh, last but not least, the knees. I just don't like the knees. It's effective, but they do look ugly. So um, that's my main issues with this guy. Uh, other than the fact that he looks like he's just way too slim, man. Yuji was slim, but it kind of works. Gojo was slim, and it still kind of works. But he just feels extremely small, especially in comparison to the others. And then I'm not even comparing it to the SH figure arts line. I'm talking about just strictly sticking to Figma. Um, it almost feels like it's a tad bit too small to go in with them. But the accessories make this guy worth the pickup, uh, the Divine Dog, and then, of course, the, um, the Chimera Shadow... I can't even remember the name of the technique now. Chimera Shadow Garden Technique Face. Um, that makes it worth it, but... That's up to you, honestly. I don't think this figure was expensive. I want to say I spent like 60 bucks on it or something like that. I don't remember. It was something close to that. I, I don't think I spent over 80 But then again, that was a Japanese release. It'll probably be much more releasing domestically. Um, and last, I forgot to include this. He does come with a pair of gripping hands for holding weapons. So those few things alone, I think, make him worth the pickup. Uh, that's not going to take away the frustrations that come with this figure. But if you want to know my opinion on which is better between this and the SHF, uh, I feel like that's not a video I have to make. Personally, I love the SHF way more, way more. That I can say without a, even a slightest bit of hesitation in my voice. But anyway, I've talked enough. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this review. If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new content. And last but not least, follow me on everything you see listed in the description below to keep up with my activity outside of YouTube. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe wherever you are, and uh, bye.